So let's see, let's see, create curve. What create curve does essentially is call itself four times. And each of those four times corresponds to this one, this one, this one, and this one. Um, so yeah, let's look at the actual code. You see these four function calls to create curve in the middle there? x1, y1, ax, ay, cx, cy, by, and all this stuff. If you look at the, the little red diagram, this point is x1, y1, and you know, it's in the diagram what the points are. So the first function call pretty much says apply the rule to this segment. The second function call starts from A, which is this point here, which says apply the rule to this segment. The third one starts at C, which is the top point. And it says apply the rule to this segment. And, and the fourth one applies the rule to this. So it's, a, it's a, another beautiful recursive fractal. So what happens, um, so this is the Koch curve. If you generalize this and add a randomness to it, say, you know, say these points are A, you know, it doesn't matter what they're called. If you move this one up and down a little bit randomly, so, like, you start from this. Instead of making these points exact, make them, like, a little bit off. And then connect the lines and make a line, uh, a triangle there. And this is also, you know, a little bit off. And then if you keep doing this, adding a little bit of randomization each time, you actually get lines that look just like coastlines around, you know, pieces of land. And if you generalize this into three dimensions and do this randomness, it actually generates 3D mountains, like 3D virtual 3D surfaces that look exactly like real mountains. So it's sort of strange, like these recursive structures are, are definitely in nature. What does it mean on the front page, um, page six, the cross snowflake has finite area but infinite perimeter? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I forgot to mention that. That's a really cool thing. So the Koch snowflake is when you start with a triangle, and you apply the rule to each side of the triangle. And you get, you, get the, you get this curve on all these sides. So it's been mathematically proven, or you know, extrapolated, that if you, if you were to do this rule an infinite number of times, which you can do in math, because it's all theoretical, uh, the volume inside of this object would be finite. It's, it's a definite amount. But the surface area is infinite. Well, not surface area, the perimeter. The perimeter is infinite. That's because every time you apply the rule, you actually increase the perimeter. So this uh, has a certain length. And then once you apply the rule to it, if you do this, then this new curve, the total length is longer than this one. So you can imagine if you do it infinitely, like it's just going to be infinitely long. So it's it's sort of mind-boggling. And this this goes, yeah, what's up? You know, like going in a certain number of recourses, go get smaller and smaller. Yeah, it, it gets smaller and smaller, definitely. But if you do it theoretically an infinite number of times, like it'll still exist. If you look at the picture um, on page six, right next to the title, the Conscious Snowflake, that curve there, you see it? That's sort of what it would look like, even if you did it an infinite number of times. So far, I could have like break it in, like, maybe like the academy, and I would like spread it, we go on infinite wood. Say again? If I could like maybe uh, have like a fan of like, Snowflake, okay. uh -huh. and I, I cut like uh, you know, like I just cut it. Like. So like you, you just cut it in half. 
Yeah, not in half, but just cut like one part of it. Don't, I cut. don't want like the segment to go from like one part of the other, but just cut it. Like you would like cut like a string in a circle. I don't really understand. You can draw it on the board if you want. On the board? Yeah. I have like a uh, circle. I just cut like this part over here. And then if I, even if this, this is like finite area, you're saying that if I cut it like that, I spread it, it's going to go on infinitely. But that doesn't make sense. So, it's like right in my finite area. I see what you mean. So, say you had this Koch curve. This shape, yeah. and it were a string, yeah. and you would cut it so the string would now be loose, yeah. and if you pulled it, yeah. it, it would go on forever. Yeah, yeah. it would. So that, that's yeah, that's what it means to have infinite perimeter, which is why it's just so fascinating. Like, it's crazy. People tried to measure the coast of Britain. How long is the coast of Britain? Right? Have you heard about this problem? If you look at it on a larger, on a large scale, like from a satellite image of the whole country, you can just draw a line around it and say, like, oh yeah, it's this length. This is the, how, the length of the coast of Britain. But if you zoom in on it, you'll find that those dr big lines that you drew are actually like really wrong, like they don't actually line up. So if you make it more precise to this new zooming angle, the zooming, uh, it gets longer. And so actually, the more that you zoom in on the coast of Britain, the longer the perimeter gets. And so it should be getting smaller because you're like just adding little, little pieces. Yeah, just adding little pieces. So say the actual um, coast of Britain is like that. And, but you look at it like at this huge distance away. You say, like, oh, yeah, this is approximately that line. But if you look at it in more detail and refine it, you say, oh, it's not actually that line. It's maybe like these lines. But the new lines are actually, the whole thing is longer. And if you do it even more and more precisely, you just get longer and longer and longer. So nobody's been able to really figure out how long the coast of Britain is. It's a fractal. Yeah, but should it be like, uh, is it even possible like, in this world to like, have like, something that's infinitely precise? It's like we'll need a fraction? Well, n not really. I mean, it's the, the, so he asks, like, is it possible in this world to have something that's really infinite like that? Uh, no, it's not. Because, I mean, there's only finite space on the Earth. Yeah, but even, even, even that, I mean, you just say that even if it has finite area or maybe volume, it can still have, like, infinite perimeter. Yeah, so the Koch curve, theoretically, you know, in math language, if you do it mathematically, it has infinite perimeter but finite area. But keep in mind, this is a theoretical creation. It's just in the world of math. And it can't really exist in the universe. But things come pretty close to it in nature. It's not actually infinite. The coastline of Britain is not actually infinite. But it's, it's, it really resembles the sort of shape. So let's see. Yeah. So any, any questions about the Koch curve? It's really interesting. So the next example is um, the Sierpinski Triangle, page 8. So the Sierpinski Triangle is very interesting. Well, uh, you take a big triangle. And you add a smaller triangle inside of it like this. So this is the rule for the Sierpinski triangle. And uh, you know, this is let's call it down or something. So this is the rule, and what you get is three new triangles. And then you apply the same rule to these new triangles. So that's Recursion, when you apply a rule to something that you already applied the rule to. So you apply it again, and you get these even smaller things. 